I've never been in situations like this, but it's been close. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, I'm sitting where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. Just don't throw away, away your life bro, with, with this situation. Was it your idea to roll this guy, or was it Constantine or Steve's? Now's the time, bro. What do you mean, roll the guy? Like this whole thing, this whole joke that the prank. I'm not going to call it a prank. I'm going to call it extortion because that's what statute it follows on there. Right. This whole thing was it your idea? Was it Steve's? Was it Constantine's? It was, it was a nonviolent rip. You know what I'm saying? It was nonviolent. But my thing is, it was playing a role that you knew, and what you gonna do? You can get over on him. If it wasn't for the police getting involved. You guys would say, oh, that was an easy rip. Now, the thing about what you got to do now is that, dude, you got to make this right. Because if you don't, remember what I said about five, six seconds ago. You got to do what's right now. You know what I'm saying? If you do what's right now, you don't have to worry about what's wrong later. And you can't take the chance on saying, I wonder what they're going to find out. I was military, so it's easier for me to remember people by their call sign than their actual name because... Quite honestly, tomorrow I can fire you, and then I, I don't really remember who you are. So, um, Recycle was, we call him Recycle because he was in Orange County Sheriff's Academy, and he broke his wrist and was recycled. So who is Recycle? Recycle is Stephen Agron. And that's how you would refer to Stephen? Right? In fact, I didn't even know his first name until this incident arised. Okay. And tell me about uh, Egg Roll. Egg Roll um, was Constantine Tanata. Um, we called him Egg Roll because he said he liked Chinese food and, you know, he looks a bit of an Asian descent, which is kind of in inappropriate, but it is what it is. All right. And what did you call Sean Bridgemillan? We called him Transport because he was a prison guard transport. It was just easy to remember that. All right. So if you were to lapse and use those nicknames, that's who you're referring to? Correct, yeah. All right. Well, you were not present at the night at the hookah lounge when all these events happened, correct? No. What's up, Sean? What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? I went to the wrong room. I thought he was in the other room. My bad. Stop happening, man. Uh, real quick, bro. Can I get off this mask? Yeah. Because it's hot. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Being cool about letting us get in the apartment, give us consent to go in, get the rifles and stuff like that. I appreciate that. Um, and we're going to give you a receipt for your rifle and your vest and your belt so you can have all that stuff. You'll get all that stuff. Um, like I said, we're working a separate case. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want you to know why you're here. Yeah. Um, and obviously it involves you, your name's in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember at the house you were saying some stuff about you kind of knew what was going on. Yeah. And that guy, whatever, and I'm going to let you tell me whatever it is. Before I do all that stuff, I'm going to read you guys real quick, just so everything's good to go. I know you, law enforcement, and I, mean, I know you kind of know what's going on. Yeah. All right? So I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, so you have the right to remain silent, bro. Anything you say can and will be uh, used you in, in the court of law. Um, you have the right to talk to a lawyer before or during questioning. Um, um if you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. Um, uh, and we want to make sure that uh, no one has either threatened you or promised you anything, like, hey, you're going you're gonna to come here and talk to me. I'm going to work stuff out for you. You, right. you understand all that, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, that, that being said, remember when you're like, hey, I kind of know what this is. Mm -hmm. There's a guy. There was a prank. There was a whatever. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like, yeah. like what's going on? So... This guy's name is Amari. He runs the hookah lounge. I've been going there, working. I was actually working security for him. Okay. All right, and uh, it was kind of an exchange thing. So I'd help him out on the the weeks that I had off from mm -hmm. U.S. Corrections. Yeah, yeah. I'd go in there and I'd help him out with security because people would go in there and take them. They're all foreigners that work there. Mm -hmm. So some people would go in there and just take them as a joke, and they wouldn't pay. They just leave. All right. um, so he came to me about that. Um, How so did you guys meet? Um, originally, I went there because there was a girl that I'm friends with, Jen. She she was working there. Okay. She was like, "Oh, come to this hookah lounge," because she heard that I was I go to the hookah lounge. Mm -hmm. What's Jen's full name? Uh, Samala. Last name Samala. I'm assuming it's Jennifer. Jennifer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is going almost a year ago. 
So I started going there, and then um, one night Jen asked me to stop by after work. So when I showed up, I had my uniform on from work. Um, so what I, kind of, like what? What did you have on? Uh, just my my uniform, uh, you know, like um, tack pants. Yeah, and, your gear and stuff. On? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I had my patrol car with me too because I took the patrol car home with the company and work for it says security on it you can't mistake it okay um so when when i walked in through the back of mars like oh i didn't know you were a cop that's where it started i know okay. how this mess began okay so i'm like no 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 i'm not a cop i work with u.s corrections he's like yeah you're a cop you're a cop and i'm like no dude I'm, you know that's a security car outside i do both mm-hmm. um and you that's told him you were not a correct i told him i said it's very different you know what I mean? I, and, you know, depending on, and I, and, you know, we're, we, me and him were friends, so we talked. Right. I said, you know, depending on what state I'm in, you know, we're looked at as law enforcement in different states. Right. I go, but that's from law enforcement only. They they just, they give us that, like, oh, hey, what's up, brother? Yeah. I was like, but as you can see, I'm security, dude. That's that's basically what it is. Okay. U.S. Corrections is basically security. All right. All right. I mean, you need a security license to do it, too. That's cool. Let me let me ask you a couple things. Um, just to clarify. Yeah. You were coming you were going home from work. Correct. And Jennifer called you to stop over at the, at yeah. the hookah real quick for whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um you pulled in and your mark security card got out of your uniform mm-hmm. and walked inside. Were mm-hmm. you armed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You had a, a, a home. firearm? Yeah, because I was okay. coming home from work. Um and I was scheduled to work the next day. Now this company doesn't have a pool firearm because you told us that you don't have a firearm at home because the company you work for now has a pool firearm right. system. I don't, where... I don't work for that company anymore. Okay. This was while I was working for that company. And the pool firearm system um, process is there is a gun at the office. You show up to work, check yeah. that gun out. At the end of your shift, you return the firearm. Unless you're, wor- yeah, unless you're working the following day or something, they, they would let us take it home. And that's policy for the company, Correct. right? Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, um... Anyway, I, I, I spoke with him, and I was telling him, I was trying to explain it to him, but the guy, he's not all up there. You know what I mean? Like, he's, you don't un- he's just, uh, he doesn't understand certain things. you got to explain things to him every, all the time. What do you think that is? I, I think just because he's not from here. Like a language barrier? Yeah, he's from Syria. So you, when you talk to this guy, you got to literally tell him like seven times in a row and then like figure out how you can break it down, you know what I mean, to talk to this guy. So he can understand it. Right, right. Um, and throughout this whole time, the the guy also, the other thing with the guy is he likes making friends with law enforcement mm-hmm. because in, I think it's because in his country, if you're friends with law enforcement, you're like un- invincible. Okay. You know? So you got, gives him juice. Right. Exactly. So he made friends with an, a sheriff named Susan. She's a sergeant okay. and them two got really close. I don't know how close, but very close. Mm-hmm. Why do you say that? Um, because they text each other all the time and he's always, he's one of those bragger type guys. So he's always bragging, yeah, she loves me, she wants me to marry her, and he'll show, like, text messages and pictures of them together, like all kinds of weird stuff. Um, as far as you know, do they hang out a lot? Yeah, she's always there at the lounge. Okay. And she's there when she's working, too. So she's there in uniform and not in uniform. Right, right. So regular clothes and right. uniform. Yeah, and, she's, and like I said, she's a sergeant. She'll go in there. Uh, in, in regular clothes, I've seen her there because, I, like I said, I was working there for the guy, so I was there pretty often. Mm-hmm. Um, and our deal with me and him was basically, you know, I didn't have to pay for hookah when I was there smoking and stuff. I come in, put a couple hours in with him on my time off. That's cool. He lets me smoke. I was cool with that, you know what I mean? I'm from New York. It's kind of like a, I get a it. New York vibe, you know? Yeah, I get it. So, um, uh, I saw in your apartment you had a big-ass hookah. Yeah. Did that come from there? No, no. Oh. I smoked too. I've been smoking hookah since New York. Okay. Um, I'm, I was friends with a girl in the Bronx, and she put me on to hookah. This was like 11, 12 years ago. Wow. So I've smoked hookah for a while. Not as much, and, you know, I've, I smoked more at, when I'm at the yeah. lounge because it's free now. You know what I mean? Hookah costs money. Is that like more or less the damaging the cigarette? Um, so. It depends. There's no actual proof yet. Like, they don't have actual statistics on it, but they say it's more damaging than a cigarette. However, the hookah... The process of the hookah it gets filtered through the water and ice, so when you smoke it, it's more clean. And then, depending on how much nicotine you're smoking, too, you have all the shisha and the tobacco, mm-hmm. it has different levels of nicotine. So, like, I get the lowest level because I don't want nicotine in my system. Yeah. I actually lost the job because of smoking hookah. Really? But yeah, I was working with. I, I got a job. I was working at the hospital, doing security at the hospital for like three weeks, and then they tested for you know, drugs and all that, yeah. and they called me. I thought I was clear because I don't do drugs and I don't even drink. 
And uh, the lady was like, yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go because you have high levels of nicotine in your system. And this is a smoke-free environment. What? I was like, nicotine? Really? Yeah, nicotine. That, they're that serious over there, that Florida hospital. I don't know. Let me ask you about your job real quick. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to keep No, that's right. Well, um, in order for you, how many companies do you work for right now? Right now, two. Two, which yeah. are? Metro State and U.S. Corrections. Okay. Yeah. In order for you to work with these companies, do you have to have some sort of security license? Yes. Or what kind of security license? GD. Uh, and some of the, some companies require concealed weapons permit, okay. which I have, but I don't I don't need that for these two companies. Okay. Um, Metro State um, requires you to wear. We do like funeral tra uh, escorts and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, we're not required to to wear a firearm at Metro State, um, but we have to have all the gear. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So you were saying that um, the sergeant and keeps hanging out at, at the hookah, or whatever. So yeah, that. she's really good friends with the same guy, as, uh, which he goes by Omar. Omar. Um, but yeah, she's really close with him. Uh, it's almost weird. I, uh, the gist of what I've gotten um, is that they met in the hookah lounge, and they started talking. She advised him she was law enforcement. So again, he was all like, you know, giddy and happy about that. Oh, let's be friends. Oh, you don't have to worry about paying. And um, and then he sold her something, uh, a mattress or some kind of furniture, maybe. This is what I what I got yeah. from what happened, how they met. And um, he put it on a, a website, Craigslist, or offer up for like twelve hundred dollars, and he gave it to her for five hundred, and so it made her happy. You know, and she was like, oh, okay, this is a cool guy. Mm -hmm. This guy, he. I've learned over time that he's a bad guy, and the last time that I met with him, he asked me to do something for him, and that's when I told him, I was like, dude, you're a fucking scumbag. I was like, I'm not. Well, what do you want you to do? He wanted me to follow his ex-wife, plant drugs in her car, and then call, like, the police and have them pull her over and be like, oh, yeah, and, you know, I want to drop an anonymous line that there's drugs in the car. Oof. Yeah, he's a real scumbag, and I've learned it over time. Like, he sexual harasses the girls and stuff like that. They'll tell the girls in there, oh, don't talk to Sean. He's a bad guy. So that they don't talk to me, so that they can't tell me what's going on. You know what I mean? And then he'll tell me, oh, don't talk to the girls. They're bitches, man. They don't like you mm -hmm. for some reason, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, he's, he's not a good guy. And as I figured it out, like, I, he would cry to me, and he'd be like, oh, you're my brother. He'd hug me, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I literally fell for his shit, and I think Susan did the same thing. You know what I mean? I wrote a statement the other day against him uh, with a detective, Detective uh, Everson. She was domestic. Orange County? Orange or County or domestic, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think her first name is Mara. Mara Everson. Mm -hmm. She's a detective. Um, I wrote a statement against him for what he asked me to do. And I told him that night, that's why I had a feeling this was coming. I told him that night, I go, dude, you'll be lucky if I decide not to report you for what you just said to me. When it originally, when it first happened. Yeah. What did he say so, when he told that? Uh, he was like, please, brother, don't do that. You know, I always take care of you. You know, this the, the typical, like, you know, Arab or Syrian way of talking. Yeah. You know, I always look out for you. He grabbed his, his hair on his on his mustache. He's like, I kill myself for you, blah, blah, you know. Um, but when he asked me to do that, I just, I was like, that's when I knew for a fact that this dude was a scumbag, that people that were talking to me and telling me these things were right. You know, and that's what I told him. I said, I, overnight, I said, you'll be lucky if I don't report this. Mm -hmm. I go, this is insane that you had. Dude, that's a woman. You want, you want me to jam up a woman, bro? Like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, you know, you know, I've been telling you all the things she's done to me. Meanwhile, I'm hearing from Jen, who's actually friends with the woman, the same girl that worked with him, that the woman's not a bad woman, that Amar was caught cheating in the building. You know, Amar did this to her. Amar beats her and stuff like that. So I'm like, now I'm finding all this out. I'm like, Jen, why did you even let me be friends with this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, but the whole thing with him is he would tell people I was a cop because he wanted to get that juice. You know what I mean? He'd be like, like if the workers were messing up, he'd be like, oh, you know, I'll just talk to Sean or Susan. They're cops. And then when, they'd, when the workers would ask me if I was a cop, I'd have to tell them, like, no, man, listen, look. Omar's got it twisted, bro. I work for U.S. Corrections, right, which have sounds... You, have you ever introduced yourself as a law enforcement officer to anybody? No. If like anybody I've ever said I'm, I'm a cop? No. Usually if somebody were to ask me something, I'd be like, yeah, I work for U.S. Corrections, and I work right. for 
And then if they ask if U.S. Corrections is law enforcement, I'd say it's like law enforcement, but it's a security position. We transport criminals. We go after people, you know, that that are getting transferred from oh. a jail. Okay. You know. So let's talk about the. Um, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. The the incident that you mentioned, that you said that you thought you knew what this was all about mm -hmm. at your apartment. What were you referring to? The uh, Mark. But what, what happened with him? Well, he told Susan a whole bunch of stories about me, and one of the workers told me what was going on. What worker told you that? Danny. Is that a male or a female? He's a male. He said, oh, man, and he's also foreign. So you, when you talk to him, you have to break stuff up, too, and he's a kid. Okay. He's 16 um, and illegally working there. Um, but he called me because all, all of his workers, even mm -hmm. though he told them not to, to talk to me or hang out with me or whatever, they still respect me because I was always cool with them. I'd still tip them even though I'm not paying, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, so Danny called me, and Danny told me, he said, hey, uh, Susan is here, and Omar is talking about you, telling her all kinds of stuff about you. Hmm. And I said, what, you know, what kind of stuff is, is, uh, is he saying? And Danny told me, he said, you know, look, man, I, I don't want to get in trouble. I said, Danny, you're not going to get in trouble, bro. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And so Danny told me basically that he was telling her that I came in there and like strong armed him or gave him a hard time about something. And I'm like, Danny, when have you ever seen me give? I, I always look out for the guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always looking out for him. And he said, no. did, did he ever pay you uh, with anything besides free hookah or whatever? Every once in a while, he would like, oh, here's 300 bucks or, or here's 500 bucks. So sometimes he'd buy me like shoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know if he bought them. You know, I don't know how he got them. But he'd come in with some shoes. One time he tried to give me a phone, an uh, iPhone 7. He said it was brand new, but it was cracked and beat up. I'm like, bro, come on, man. I don't need that. You know what I mean? So he, he would he would pay me here and there, but it would be out of the blue. And on a day I wasn't working or something like that, you know what I mean? He would just hand me off cash. How often were you working there? Like a couple times a week, once a week, once a month? For a while it was just a couple times a week. Uh, and then if I was, you know, two weeks gone, I'd come back and work for, you know, three or four days throughout the, the week. And then, you know and then what, what did you do when you were there? Like, like what was uh, your Basically actual just, job? I, well, I was supposed to just be doing security, but he, uh, he like, fired the DJ. So every once in a while, I'd run the, D, the DJ booth. It's just like a YouTube turn around. But security, like, bouncer, like, out front, mm -hmm. or, like? More like uh, sit there and smoke hookah until I'm needed if he has a problem. If he's got a problem, you take yeah. care of his problem. Yeah. Muscle. Yeah, like a bouncer. Did you, know, you have like a bouncer? Were you in uniform? When I was working, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't in uniform while working with him. He wanted me to. Did yeah. you carry a firearm with you? Um, when well, I carried my concealed, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Where's that firearm? Um, I mean, a gun's a kind of important thing. Where no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that gun? Uh, yeah, no. Um, that firearm. What is it? Uh, Central Florida um, College. Why is it there? Uh, because. Like who has it? Like who? Central Florida Police has it. They took it. Yeah, because I was working a security detail there. Oh, the University of Central Florida. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was working a security detail there, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't know who I was because it was a plain clothes detail. Um, for the same company that I told you I quit, that's why I quit. Oh, that's the ongoing investigation that you have when yes. you were arrested up there or yeah. whatever. They took your gun as evidence. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so you never had a firearm and a, and a badge on you when you worked? Not in a work capacity. When you worked at the hookah? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I've only, I've gone in there a couple times after working mm -hmm. at a site, yeah. obviously. Did you work on the night of the 12th of January of this year? Um, I think it was a Friday. For Amar? Were you at the, the hookah? And yeah, I was, work there, yeah I, was, or? I was there, but not working. Who were you with? Um, I was with a group of friends. Specifically, like, names? Yeah, Steve. Hold on a second. Yeah. I also had one, sir. Hey, can I get one of those guys to give me a pen? 
So he was cool. He was kind of cool with you, I guess. Like everything yeah. was cool. Yeah, everything was cool, man. He, and then he, he had seemed, some problems with his wife. Yeah, he seemed like a cool guy, and like I said, he played the part right. And he, he was calmed you, crying. Yeah, straight up, like smoke hookah, everything's cool. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Oh. You know, I only paid for hookah that one night that I first went there. That was the only time Enough I paid for hookah. Good. How much is that? How much is that? Like twenty-five dollars or something. And how long does that last? Like if I pay, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I mean, I know the bars and stuff. I know it's cool to hang out or whatever. But how, if I pay twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. how long does that last me? Like an hour, or the, or am I good for like the night? Yeah, it's like forty five minutes to an hour, depending on how you smoke. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're a strong smoker and you're really like just going at it, it's probably gonna be like half hour. Half hour, yeah. Shit. And how long do the people hang out in general? People hang out there. A couple hours, two, three hours sometimes. And they just hang out. Yeah. Well, they drink and stuff there. They they drink beer. The guy has a beer and wine license, so he can serve beer and wine. But you know, if, all right. if you pay him, he'll uh, he'll give you stronger stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like all this stuff that I started seeing, and right? Everything that that's right. when I started realizing this guy's not. Hey, what's guy. up with this dude? Yeah. Um, I mean, I never to. I don't smoke hookah. Yeah. I can, like I don't really smoke anything, but yeah. Um, it's like I can see like. I can see the, the I can kick back here, yeah. and relax, yeah. and have a drink, and chill. Yeah, you can go with a couple friends and stuff. And hang out? Yeah, just relax. Plus, like, the whole idea, like, people don't realize. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, you good? People think that uh, it's the hookah that relaxes you, but it's actually the breathing. Because, Cause like, you're, how do you talk? Okay, you're going in and out, in and out. And out. Breath out. Right, I yeah. get it. I get it. So yeah, people, I mean, people mistake that. Oh, yeah, I smoke hookah because it calms me down. No, but it's really because you're breathing. like, yeah, yeah, it's the right. I get that. Um, what else was I going to ask you, bro? So you, on the 12th, you work, did you work security, like somewhere else? No, and no. And you came over there, or like, like, or did you just come in and... Oh, actually, yeah, I did work earlier that day on the 12th. I worked with Metro State. What did you do with that? Uh, we did a funeral escort. We got oh, like, right. three funeral oh. escorts. Yeah, we have. Uh, we have what do you guys do with that? Like, how you do it? Like, we got we have patrol cars uh, that say Metro State on them. They're black mm -hmm. and white. Uh, kind of the, the owner of the company he likes California LAPD style vehicles. Oh yeah. So he's got black and whites that say Metro State, and um, they got lights and sirens. The lights are purple. And so you did like traffic. Traffic, yeah, going. So like traffic. you break, you hold the intersection, hold and the intersection, go through, and then you let, keep going. Yeah. Do you have one of those cars, or you just? I don't personally have one of those cars. No, that's what yeah. I'm saying, yeah. But, but that's what we do. Do you sign you one to sign? Yeah. Yeah, we go in, sign them out, and then we go do the, the escorts. So you didn't go with that car to the hookah bar? No, the owner wouldn't let anybody take those vehicles because they resemble. So you go in your own car? Yeah. Uh -huh. I always use my own vehicle or when I had when I was using the take-home car with the security company. Yeah. You know, we had a, I had a white Crown Vic that clearly stated security. Amar leaned on it and sat on it multiple times. You know what I mean? He knows the deal. He's just. Does he have a lot of cop friends? He does. He does? He does. And he does that because, like I said, he comes off to you as this guy that's in poverty. He's hurting. Right. You know what I mean? But he's the owner of the business. He's the owner of the business. And, he, you know, he's, he'll, t he'll say that his wife is stealing money from him, and he'll give really? you all these sob stories to make you think, oh, man, we feel for this guy, you know? Did, she, did you ever meet his wife? Uh, recently, yeah. Yeah, well, she's so a nice woman. Really? And she's scared for her life. And he paints it like... Yeah. Actually, she, we, I was with her last night when Orange County showed up because uh, she had called me. And she's like, hey, I don't know what to do. I'm uh, Amar's arrested now. And he got arrested last night. Yeah. She said Amar's arrested for now. For what though? Um battery. Um For her? Like the yeah, type deal? Yeah, battery. He's got seven charges. Battery, tampering with a witness, um, violation of injunction. Violation of an injunction with so a they are, he was, she already had an injunction on him. Yeah. Is she ever at the business? Did she ever go to the business? She was in the beginning, and then she stopped altogether. Mm. And then anytime you'd ask him about what was going on with his uh, with his wife, he would be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. <clears throat> really? And then eventually he started crying. Telling you, hey, yeah, this is my problem? Yeah, yeah. She, I come home, she beats on the dog. Like, he just made, he painted the picture of her like she was the worst woman in the planet, mm. you know? 
We know he's talking about hookah stuff, really. Okay. Uh, you were saying that um, the night of the 12th, you were there with some friends. Yeah. Steve. Steve. I don't know his last name. And uh, the other guy's name is Constantine. What was Steve wearing? Um, I think, yeah, like tan shorts and uh, like some kind of dressy shirt or polo shirt or something. Was he wearing a hat? Uh, I believe so. Constantine, what was he wearing? Um, Constantine was wearing... Like, What's his last name, do you know? I don't know his last name either. How do you know him? Uh, I've worked details with him. Both of these guys? Yeah. Do you um, have their phone numbers? Um, yeah, I should have their numbers. Okay. Yeah. Can I, I have to ask you permission for this. Um, can I search your phone to look for these phone numbers? No, I don't want nobody going through my phone. Okay. But so Constantine, no what was he wearing? So um, Constantine was wearing a suit. Like button down. Like a button down suit? Yeah. That's pretty different type of clothing. One mm -hmm. wearing shorts and the other one a suit? Mm -hmm. Was Constantine coming back from a job or something? Or? I think he worked at uh, one of the bars. Okay. So what happened that night? All right, so basically that night um, we came in there and we played a prank on Amar. All right. The prank was a very easy, simple prank. All right. Um, Walk us through that. So we're all hanging out and Constantine comes in. We're all hanging out who? Me, me, Steve, and Amar are sitting down. Okay. And we're hanging out. And Constantine comes in, and we have a girl that Constantine knows. What's her name? I don't know her name. Okay, so That's she's why a Constantine friend of knows, yeah. Constantine. So she she comes in, she sits down, she orders some, some drinks and a hookah. Yeah. And Amar goes over, and, and we just knew it would happen this way. Amar goes over, starts touching her hair, flirting with her, you know. She asks for something a little harder. Mm -hmm. He goes and finds something harder, and uh, he brings it out to her. All right. So Constantine. Now the reason we were doing this prank was one, we do pranks a lot. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, we just do. It's just a work thing. We all do pranks. Um, the idea was he wasn't listening to me. He wasn't listening to Susan, and he wasn't listening to anybody else about this whole liquor thing mm -hmm. and the flirting with girls. We we're trying to help the guy. Literally mm -hmm. helped the guy. So Susan was aware of this prank? No, no, no. Susan wasn't aware of oh, the prank. okay. I'm just saying Susan's aware of some of the things he's doing. Oh, the well. shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. I've literally sat there next to her and heard her tell her, and like, Amar, you need to stop. Because you're going you're gonna to risk your business. You're going to get in trouble. You know, mm -hmm. stop serving alcohol. She knew of it all. Um, and like I said, they're really close. Um, so anyway, again, the prank. Um, we, we send uh, Constantine over. And he's like, hey, sir, can I ask you a question? You know, he's, he's dressed in a suit. And, uh, hold, hold on a second. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this. Yeah. You guys had already predetermined this is what you're going to do. You're going to send a female in to ask for liquor. Mm -hmm. Was she underage? No, she's actually of age, but we pretended okay. she was of underage, okay. yeah. How did you guys pretend that? Well, she said she was underage. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I don't know if you guys have like a fake ID or something. Well, no, what is she? White, Spanish? She's a white girl. Yeah. White girl? Yeah. About how old is she? Uh, 22. Do you know her? I don't know her. You don't have her phone number? You don't associate on social media or nothing with her? No. How about Constantine and uh, Steve? I don't. I mean, I don't know them that well. Like I said, just from work and stuff. And we, uh, they, we play pranks. There's a group of uh, his their friends. They play pranks. You know, we all play pranks on each other. Okay, because this is a pretty convoluted prank. Like, if me and him are going to do a prank, like I know him, I know his phone number and all that. <laughs> yeah, 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 if I pull yeah. somebody from the hallway, yeah, and I say let's play a prank on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other guys gonna be like, what the? We talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, Steve and and me knew Amar. Steve, you know, Amar knows who Steve is. How does he know him? Because Steve started coming to the lounge as well. Okay. Okay. So that's that's where that went. Was he was Steve working with you? No, not at the lounge. He was just chilling. Yeah, he'd come and hang out. Who introduced him? Who introduced Steve to the whole like? Uh, well, he Steve, just happened to be a guy coming. Like how did no? It go Steve down? came for my birthday party. So you had a birthday party at the at the yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Steve came for my birthday party and. Um, 
And then Amar. And you know Steve from work. Yeah. So oh. Amar, you know, got involved with the whole group. Like, oh, hey, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Did Steve ever introduce himself as a law enforcement officer? I don't believe I've ever heard him say it. Okay. Not in front of you? Right. Did he ever carry a firearm or a badge on him? Um, when he was working, I don't think he carried it into the club. Okay. All right. So Constantine walks over to this female. And what happens? While Amar was with the female. Okay. And basically, he's like, hey, ma'am, can I see your ID? And she's like, sure. So she shows the ID, and uh, Constantine kind of looks at the ID, and he looks back at her, and then uh, he starts talking to Lamar. Um, at this point in time, you know, we're not in the group. We're separate. Yeah. And me and Steve are kind of just watching from the, from the chair smoking hookah. And uh, Amar comes running right to me. Talk to this guy. Talk to this guy. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, he's checking the ID, man. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. He, he might be a cop. I'm like, all right, I'll talk to the guy. So I go talk to the guy, and, like, on the sideline, we're kind of laughing, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit. We're joking around because it's funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like, okay, you know, the guy's he's obviously nervous. nervous about something now. So um, so anyway, we go through the motions. We play it out a little bit, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, he say, uh, constantly he's telling him, he's like, you know, you can get shut down. You know what I mean? For serving alcohol. You know what I mean? Minus. I didn't hear Constantine say he was a cop at all during any point in time. Do you ever uh, expose a badge? No, he showed his security. The funniest part about it is he showed, he showed his security card. So Social never, security no, card? No, no, no. Security, like, a security, like, a like a security card. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. with his picture on it. Okay. So he never exposed a badge, a gun, and a radio? Um, I know he had a radio on him. I know he had a radio on him. Like walkie-talkie type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we didn't have any radios. It was just something he, he brought in with him. Did he ever have, like, an earpiece? Do you know if he's wearing an earpiece? Um, yeah, I don't remember if he had an earpiece. Do you guys normally have them? Like, earpieces do you have an earpiece at work? I don't wear an earpiece. I don't like them. Yeah. Um, but some of the guys wear earpieces at work, you know? Yeah. I don't like them. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of the earpiece. Okay. So you guys are talking, you and Constantine, and, and then what happens? Where's Constantine from, by the way? Um, I'm not white, Asian, black. I think he's Mexican, maybe. Maybe Mexican. Yeah. Some sort of Latino. Yeah, me yeah, Mexican. Maybe. Does he speak Spanish? Do you know that? I don't know if he speaks Spanish. He's got a little bit of an accent, though. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're and Constantine are talking. Um, Amar, Amar. Yeah, Amar. Amar's freaking out over He's the freaking fire. out. Yeah, he's shaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's okay. shaking, acting crazy. He's like, oh, who is, is this guy? You guys got to take care of this for me. Is that something that he, with the girl or something, is that something that is normal for him? Like, does he do that? Yeah, he's got, he's going to have actually, like, coming up soon, he's going to have some serious issues with uh, sexual harassment and sexual assault case. From... So he hires these girls that don't have paperwork, mm -hmm. and he has them work, and then he pays them, like, six wow. bucks an hour or whatever, you know what I mean? And then says, oh, well, you know, I'm going to give you 18% of the tips. <clears throat> well, the whole problem is that the only tips he gives them is what cash goes into the tip jar. He doesn't give them the cash from the credit cards. Mm -hmm. and like I said, I've learned all of this over time, being around him more and more. <laughs> He's a douchebag. Um so, so, yeah, she came to me and told me, and I said, hey, you know, you need to go talk to Orange County, you know, let, yeah, yeah. let the detective know or something, what's going on. And I go, you can't just let that slide, because if he did it to you, then what everybody else is saying is true, too. So the the reason why you guys are praying the prank, prank is kind of like, I guess because you know that this is something that he does? He yeah, does? yeah. And it was, at, you know, at this point in time, we're playing the prank just to make him like, hey, bro, you see where you're fucking up? Like, you need to stop or all this is going to be over for you. You know what I mean? At that time, we were still being friendly. It was still a friendly situation. Yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. Let's go back to the prank. So you guys are talking and then what? Yeah. So, and Constantine. so me and Constantine are talking, and, and it's almost like just gibberish, just funny, like, oh, pretending like we're talking. You know what I mean? Was this white chick with you guys? No. As soon as uh, Constantine checked for the ID and did the, the motions with her, she left. Okay. So um, Omar was like, get the fuck out of here, you know. 
so she left. Um, so anyway, we're, we're jibber jabbering, talking, bullshitting, and uh, Amar comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, let me talk to you." And Constantine played the trick properly. He's like, "Hey, I'll get with you in a minute." So we jibber jabber some more, and then I go, "All right, let me talk to him." So at this point in time, Amar and me start talking. Um, as uh, this is all happening, like right there in, on inside the the hookah lounge, mm -hmm. by the bar or by where? Uh, between the bar and the couch. Amar kept trying to get uh, us all to sit down and smoke. Okay. Instead of standing. He's like, oh, come smoke. And he kept trying to get Constantine to, to smoke and, you know, offer him all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so anyway, um, I go up to Omar. I start talking to Omar. I started to feel bad because he was all worked up. So I'm like, hey, bro, calm down. We're going to take care of this. No big deal. No big deal, man. Just relax. Calm down. I go, this happens all the time, you know, at any bar. Just be cool. Mm -hmm. We got this, man. I was like, you didn't do anything wrong. So... Uh, Amar then is like, hey, man, you know, we got to get this guy out of here. Whatever it takes. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do, bro? I can't do nothing. He's like, go tell him you're a cop. I'm like, no, bro. I was like, are you <laughs> fucking nuts? I was like, I, I go, I'll tell him I'm security. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'll show him my U.S. corrections card. Maybe that'll help. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, 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 do whatever you got to do. So I go back over, and we start laughing and bullshitting some more. And then I look over at Amar, and you can tell he's kind of like iffy now because we're laughing now. Me and the guy are yeah. laughing, you know, it's not, it's not, you shouldn't be laughing if it's a serious thing, right? All right. So um, I go back to Omar and he's like, what's going on? Why were you guys laughing? I was like, oh, it was just a joke he said and it was funny. And he's like, oh, I don't like the jokes right now, man. I'm nervous. I'm like, well, don't be nervous. I was like, we're going to take care of this. And this probably all happened within an hour, this whole process, this whole mm -hmm. thing, right? So um, anyway, uh, Omar, we all sit down and Omar's like, all right. Here's what we're going to do. He's like, you seem like a good guy, and these two are good guys. And I'm a good guy, and I swear, and he does the, the, this thing with the mm -hmm. grabs the mustache. He's like, I swear to God, nobody will ever find out about this. And so um, Constantine's like, okay, what's up? He goes, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to give you something, and when this all be taken care of, correct? So Constantine's like, uh, okay, bro. You know what I mean? At the time, we're thinking he's going to come back and, like, here's a hookah. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, that, or the third, you know, something. Now, you guys are all huddled still inside the... the yes. Okay, there's yeah. people around... No, well, it's, it, was late, it was later in the night, so and it was a quieter night, so people had <laughs> already began leaving and stuff like that. The lights were turned on. They were closing. Okay. You know, it was closing. Okay. We didn't want to do the prank in front of all the customers and have the customers be all crazy, yeah. you know what I mean, and make it look crazy. You know, we figured out, piss them off. Yeah. Um, so we were still, like, like I said, you know, part of the prank, we were still looking out for him. We didn't want to make people think, like, something weird was going on. So uh, anyway, Amar's like, hey, hey, let's go, let's go. I'm like, where do you want to go? He's like, drive me. We're going to go to Burger King, and then we're going to go to the bank. I'm like, okay. So we go to Burger King. Amar and me get food, and then we go to the bank. Who uh, paid at Burger King? He paid. Do you know if he paid cash or? I'm pretty sure he used a credit card. Card? Yeah. Did you go drive through or went in? drive through in your car? Yep. Which car was that? I had a Nissan Moreno at the time. What color? Uh, dark gray. Was that your car or? No, I was around. My truck transmission was broken. What kind of truck is it? It's a Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just fucking replaced the engine and the fucking transmission went. That sucks. Yeah. Okay. So you guys drove to Burger King and then the bank? Yep. And at the bank, drive through or walk up? Uh, Omar got out and went to the ATM. It was a walk up ATM. Okay. At the bank. So Omar gets back in the car, and I'm like, all right, what's your plan, bro? What do you, what do you, uh, you went to the bank. He's like, I'm going to offer him money. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea, bro. He's like, oh, no, in this country, money buys everything. All right, bro. Good luck. So I bring him back. We sit down again. We're smoking. And, uh, then he goes, come get up, come with me. I go, okay. So we go behind. Let me pause it real quick because I forgot to ask you. I asked you what Steve and Constantine were wearing. What yeah. were you wearing? Um, actually, I think I was wearing this hoodie. A hoodie? Yeah. Okay. And just regular cargo pants. No hat, nothing like that? Um, I don't think I was wearing a hat. Okay. 
but it, it it comes and it goes. Sometimes I wear it because I got this bald spot. Right. Sometimes I wear a hat, sometimes I don't, depending <laughs> on how I look in that night. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so anyway, uh, oh, so he tells me to come around to the bar with him and uh, the back uh, register area, which, again, I've, I've walked in every single square foot of that building because I worked there. So you know it. Right. And uh, he goes into the, the, there. he's got like a blue money bag, and he starts pulling more cash out of the money bag. All right. So I'm like, all right, bro, I know what the plan is now. You're going to try to pay the guy off. Everything in America you can buy, I get it, bro. Because, uh, you know, he, he, he lives the I got money life. Does he have money? I really don't know. To be honest with you, I don't, like, my opinion, I don't think he does. He just plays it? I think he, he more plays it, but I think I think he does pay. I mean, he's got his hands in a lot of weird stuff. Like, I found out that he was uh, doing some kind of deal with uh, uh, Auto Shop on OBT, where he was, like, buying cars from, like, an auction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of people do that, yeah. Yeah. All right, so he's digging out of the bank bag right. more money and what? So uh, so he grabs the money up, and we go back and we sit down, and he basically he makes an offer with this guy, right, Constantine. And um, What does he offer? He says he'll give him uh, <clears throat> a total of $2,000, and he'll give him $1,000 right now cash, and then he'll give him another $1,000 the next night cash. All right, so we, the, part, the, plan, the plan was that prank was going to end that night, Mm -hmm. Right there. Did Constantine ever, ever identify himself as any type of law enforcement? Not around me. Okay. Did he, at any point, obviously to your knowledge, ever discuss the fact that there were violations that he had at his place? Yeah. And, like, did he discuss any fines or anything like that? Um, they were going to be levied against? No, I didn't. Re I don't remember him saying anything about any fines. I know he said that he knows the place has been fined. Okay. Well, what know? was the complaint like? What did Constantine tell him was? What was the? Why rate? was he going to get in trouble? Um. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't going to get him in trouble that night. That was the the funny part about it is that he was like everything he said was. You know, you can get in trouble for this. You no, know, you can get in. You trouble You know, you for can this. get in trouble for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. He never, he never said like, "Hey, bro, I'm, you're going to jail. I'm going to get you in trouble." You know what I mean? He never yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah. It was just like I said. Part of the, the prank was to like advise him, "Bro, this is what could happen to you." You know what right. I mean? So don't do I'm this shit. Off. Stop this shit, dude. Because yeah, I like, yeah. com I like coming here. I like sitting right. down and smoking. You know, you're gonna mess it up for all. Of right. Everybody's gonna. <laughs> we're not. None of us are gonna have a place to come anymore. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And by this point in time, like when I first started going there, versus towards the end. Yeah, I was coming there all the time with groups of friends, and because his business was dying, mm -hmm. you know, plus it's slow season for him in this area on I Drive. So you're well, in that area. I was bringing them customers. These guys were paying full price. You know what I mean? I never asked him to give them a discount. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And the only thing was is that when I was with the group, I was the one that didn't have to pay. You know what I mean? That was always the deal with me and him. So back to the prank. Yeah. He's got a pocket full of money. Yeah. And he's telling Constantine what? He's like, oh, here. So. This is where he pulls out the money, and it's a thousand dollars, right? And where are you down. guys at this time? We're all sitting down in the, in the <clears throat> table smoking hookah. So he's like, "I'm giving you this thousand dollars to Constantine," and he says, "I want you to erase everything out of your phone." What was in his phone? Constantine took pictures of the ID. Whose ID? The girl's ID. Okay. Yeah. So he goes, "I want you to erase everything out of your phone. I'm going to give you another thousand dollars tomorrow to come back." And and uh, and we're all over. So this is where the the prank became a two day prank. Mm -hmm. Because he said, "Come back tomorrow." You're going long prank. Right. Did he hand the money to Constantine, or did he give it to you to give? To uh, we were sitting in a group, so it was Constantine, me, um, Amar, and Stephen. So Stephen hand, or I mean, Con uh, Amar handed it to me, and I handed it to to Constantine. And what was it like a wad or it was a wad? Yeah. So he handed you the wad, and you handed the money to Constantine. Right. Okay. This is the only time you've ever touched that money. Right. Okay. So so we passed we passed the money. Um and you guys are sitting down? Like yeah, we're smoke sitting, hookah? Yeah, we're sitting down. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's the like I've been in the place. Mm -hmm. 
Like you step in through the front door. I know in the far back by the DJ, there's a door. And then on the far left is the back door. Correct. And uh, There's three doors. There's the front door, yeah. the side door, and the back door. Where are you guys sitting in relation by the, to those seats? By the side door. Okay. Right, right next to the DJ's area. Okay. Yeah, yeah the yeah. couch for yeah. that. All right. So, no, side note. Now I'm thinking about it. When Amar was counting the money out from the bag, that was the first time I, I touched money. Where did you get that bag from? Where was it? Um, he reached down behind his desk. I don't know. Where's that? At? Is that at? His desk. If you're inside the building, there's like a little cutoff spot where there's a kitchen, and then like a computer, and then his camera system and everything. There's a camera system there. In the place? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've helped him install it, some of his cameras. Um, so there is a camera system there. Um, but right next there, like his desk is right here, and then you can't get to the desk because it's blocked off by the bar. So it's like his little office space, basically. So in the office space, um, he reached underneath the table, his desk, and pulled out. He pulled out a bag full yeah. of money. So you said he gave you the money there? Yeah, he, he gave me the money there. Why did he give you the money? Because he wanted me to pay the guy. He wanted me. He's like, Sean, you take care of this. You you deal with this guy. Blah blah. You know what I mean? Okay. Like he didn't. He would want. He wanted his hands clean from whatever was going on. Mm -hmm. He figured that because he saw me and the kid laughing that we had better connection type deal. He's like, you just deal with the guy. You deal with the guy. Okay. So he handed so, you how much money? Handed me a thousand dollars. Okay. Right. So then, um, we're, we're when we get around the corner, I said, all right, here, you give it to the guy because, you know, it's it's you. I, it's gonna look funny if I give it to the guy. Okay. So I give it to him. When we get to the couches, he hands it to me, I hand it to the guy. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if it makes a difference. Not really. It's yeah, a I lot just, of handing um, and yeah, taking. Yeah, but. yeah. When he went, you guys said you went to Burger King, then you went to the bank, mm -hmm. and then he came back. Mm -hmm. But then he's saying he, get, he got the money. He already had money in the bag. He had a bag mm -hmm. full of money. Mm-hmm. So, so why did he go to the ATM? Like, why I he, really don't know why he went to the ATM. Did he come back with a bunch of money from the ATM? Or he, he had money. Yeah, he had money from the ATM. Like how much? Like what do you what do you think? Was it stacks or was no, it? No, it was yeah, maybe a few hundred dollars. Because I'm just thinking, like, why he took? Why did he make you go all the way over there? Yeah, I don't if know. If in the back of the thing he's got a bag full of money. Yeah. Did you guys ever talk? In the car, was he freaking out, or he was just really freaked out the whole time, really nervous the whole time. Okay, you know, I kept telling him not to worry, tried to keep calming him down. You know what yeah. I mean? So back to the couch. Yeah. So Amari hands you the money, you hand the money to Constantine. Correct. And then what? What said? What happens? Um, he's like, all right, I want to see you delete the delete it right now. Now he's he gave him money, so he feels a little bit better. Yeah. He's like, What's Steve doing the whole thing? Just kind of sitting there. Okay. The lump yeah. on the log is yeah. <laughs> well, at the in the beginning of the prank, Steve didn't know about the prank. You know what I mean? Okay. That was that was the the funny part too. Did we, you we, tell him? Anyway we ended up telling him. Yeah, we ended up telling him one because and towards like the middle when Steve was hanging out with Amar, I said, "Come here, bro." I was like, "Yo, bro, we're playing a prank." And he's like, "Oh, you fucking assholes!" You know what I mean? Because yeah. this is what we do. Okay. Um. So anyway, um, he deletes the he deletes the pictures. pictures. Uh -huh. Deletes the pictures out of the phone. And Lamar goes, I swear to God, man, I, we, we all keep this right here. I'll pay you again tomorrow. You come back. Um, I'll, give, I'll give you another $1,000. And you come here and you hang out. And you smoke hookah and we hang out. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, bro. So he goes out the side door. We continue to talk to Lamar. Where did he go? Where did Constantine go? Uh, he went out the side door. I think he, he left. Okay. So, um, so anyway, the conversation... Uh, it starts between me, Negron, and uh, Amar, and um, you. Or, I'm sorry, me, Steve, and, and Amar. Who's Negron? Um, I think that's Steve's last name. Negron? Oh, He's Spanish, dude? Yeah. Uh, what, um, and you don't know Constantine's last name. Like, how do we get a hold of Constantine? How do you get a hold of him? Uh, I, I got his number. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's the deal, bro. Well, well, we'll talk at the end, but keep keep going. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, uh, so anyway, the, the plan was to go back the next night. So did he leave with this guy's money? Yeah. Well, so Constantine took the money. Yeah. Dipped out. Yeah. So it's you and Steve. Yeah. Sitting there, with uh, Amar. Yeah. 
what it said. Uh, we, we go, you know, we talk about what happened. Omar's more calm. He's like, yeah, this guy come back, and I pay him tomorrow, and we're all good. I don't worry about nothing, man. He's like, I got money. And I was like, okay. So we uh, we talk a little bit. He thanks me and Steve. He's like, hey, man, you know, we appreciate everything that's going on. Appreciate you helping me out, blah, blah, you know. He's like, we'll deal with this tomorrow. So I'm like, all right. So when now we we leave, and um, we was all. It, was the, I'm oh, sorry, when all this stuff is going on, what is it like, where's the wait staff, the rest of the people, like what's going on? They they were all there. Like, are they the paying girls, attention? Like, but the girls, or, yeah. Well, um, no, they were cleaning. Amar made them clean. So, so people left then. Yeah. Or are they cleaning in front of people? No, no, no. People by this. Like I said, it was an hour. It was like one thirty, and the bar clo- the hookah lounge closes at two. Two. So it was like an hour. People had already left. When me and no, Amar, nobody was told to leave. Nobody was told leave. to leave. No. Okay. Uh, when me and Amar went to the banks, people had already had left. So by that time, okay, yeah, because he wouldn't he wouldn't just leave with the people there. So you guys all he thanks you guys. You guys um, walk out, or do you guys stay there? What, what else? Happened? We walk. Me, him, and uh, and Steve walk. Me and Amar and Steve we walk out together. We go out towards the front near his car, and we're discussing and talking about you know what happened. He's saying thank you, appreciates it. He says you know tomorrow I give the guy more money. Blah blah blah. You know so on and so forth. So um, we le- we all leave. Um, Who left first? Uh, Steve leaves, then Mar leaves, then I leave. Okay. So or no way. Maybe a Mar left first. What is Steve driving? A Nissan. What? Like a Nissan? A uh, Sentra. What color? A uh, black. And a Mar has a uh, silver Lexus. Like a new one, like a nice one or yeah, an old. It's one? a nice one. Yeah, it's not. It's not old. But it's newer. Two door or four door? Uh, I think it's a four door. Okay. So Amar goes which way? And which way do you guys go? Um, we all traveled the same direction out of the plaza because there's no other option. Yeah. Um, and then I think Amar went towards his house, and and then we, me and Steve left, and um, we, me, Steve. And Constantine met up at Denny's, and with Denny's. Denny's, we is it far? Or is it close? No, it's right around the corner. Huh. That's right. right. Yeah. Uh, if you, it's on like if you're on Kirkman, you take a right on the International. It's right there. It's literally like right around the corner from the. Okay, so you Google take Lounge. Universal northbound. Yeah. And you come around the other end over there. Yeah. So the Denny's at Kirkman and International. Yeah. So was that a thing? Like, did you guys? Pre-planned to meet did there? You, yeah, was that no, like, hey, we we'll meet at Denny's? No, we or did the, you call him and say, we, hey, what's up? We got on the phones and we're like, bro, where the fuck are you? Yeah. And he's like, oh, let's meet at Denny's. So we went to Denny's. Uh-huh. Did you guys meet at the Wawa for anything? No. We Never met at Wawa. the Wawa? No, we didn't go to Wawa at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so we went to Denny's, and then uh, at Denny's we were laughing, joking yeah. around, this fucking guy, we got him, you know yeah. what I mean? So uh, the, plan, the plan from there was, we're going to make it the next day there. We're going to put the money in a card, right? And we're going to give them the card. Mm-hmm. We're going to say, bro, we got you. We planned for a whole group to be there and everything. Yeah, yeah. And the group was going to be there and pay. You know what I mean? You know, they're not trying to get nothing free. They're going to still pay. Group of friends? Or group of friends and people, you know what I mean? Just that go there. When you guys went to the Denny's, where did you sit? We didn't eat. Yeah, we didn't go inside and eat. We just met in the parking lot? We met in the parking lot. We were going to go inside and eat, and then the lady was like, it's going to be a minute, and there was, like, nobody inside, so we were, I was like, dude, fuck this. I got work in the morning. So y'all walked in and walked yeah. right out. Yeah. About what time was this? Um, Three-ish, maybe. Like between 3 and 3.30? Yeah, probably. Okay. So you guys were going to do a, a big reveal the next day. Right. And what happened? Um, the next day I went there. Did you have his money with you? Yeah. Well, I didn't have the money. Constantine still had the money. And where was he at with you? He was coming. So we were all meeting. We all had to meet at different times. We all had stuff going on. Yeah. Okay. So we were all meeting at different times. So Steve actually got to the place first, then me, and then we were waiting for Constantine. And there was a large group there already that that was supposed to be there for the reveal. That's you put it. So they were in it. Right. Did that group have your mom or Steve's mom in there? 
Uh, Steve's mom. All my family's in New York. Okay. What's Steve's mom's name? Do you know? Uh, I always called her Steve's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McGrown? Mrs. Mrs. Mom. Yeah, just Steve's mom. Okay. But all them people, they were in on it? Like they knew what was going on? Or?